Okay, today I'm going to talk to you about climate change. So first of all, it's really important to know the very basics of climate change. Climate change essentially is being caused by an increase in atmospheric carbon dioxide levels, and that in turn is leading to an increase in global temperatures due to that greenhouse gas, carbon dioxide, absorbing infrared radiation from the sun. If you want to learn more about this process, please look at the video called The Greenhouse Effect. There's some other information we need to know before we delve deeper into climate change. Now, another massive contributing factor towards climate change is due to an increase in the number of livestock globally, such as cattle, goats and camels. So due to an increasing population, an increasing demand for meat produce, for example, there are more and more livestock. Now, the livestock actually produce a lot of this gas called methane. And methane gas, CH4, is also a greenhouse gas that does a similar thing to carbon dioxide. So it absorbs heat energy and results in an increase in global temperature. Now, the reason why livestock produce um, lots of methane is due to them producing methane through digestive processes. So essentially they produce a lot of this gas called methane, which can also contribute towards climate change and increase global temperature. So global warming is an example of climate change. But why is it bad that the world's getting a bit hotter? Surely in the UK, that would be a really, really nice thing if it was a little bit hotter. So I'm going to show you the example here of why it's really, really bad news that the world's getting hotter. And the big answer for that is it's melting the ice caps. If we have an increase in global temperature, the ice caps at the North and the South Poles will start to melt. Now that's not just an issue for the habitats and the animals that live at the North and South Pole, it's a problem for everyone around the world. Because as these ice caps melt, it causes a rising sea level. The sea level rises. That's because all of that water is now in the ocean rather than being stored as ice at the two poles. Now around the world, that causes flooding. So all of the, the areas that are low down, so don't have a particularly high elevation, can be flooded. Loads of coastal regions and areas that, that, that are quite low down to sea level, close to sea level, could be flooded. And this could cause severe damage and problems across the whole of the planet. Now today it's very easy to gather information about carbon dioxide levels, but we can also find, um, we can research this stuff called historical data. So we could look back at what carbon dioxide levels were like a long time ago. And there's three main ways that we need to know that we could do this. So first of all, what we can do is we can analyze fossils. By looking at fossils, we can determine the levels of carbon dioxide that were around when these organisms were. We could also have a look at tree rings. So by chopping down a tree and looking at the different rings, we could tell how much carbon dioxide there was at that particular stage of that tree's life. We could also, quite an interesting one, is within ice sheets, there are often gas bubbles which have been trapped for a very long time. Again, scientists can analyse these gas bubbles to figure out when they, how long they've been around for and the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere at that particular stage. So as you can see, um, there's lots of ways of finding out how the levels of CO2 have changed over time, as well as today, using all the modern techniques of finding carbon dioxide levels today. So how do we help the situation? What can we do to support the situation? Now, first of all, what we can do is we can make a switch to using renewable energy sources. Because by using renewable energy sources, 
we're not burning as much fossil fuel, so therefore we're not producing as much carbon dioxide. However, that's something that governments need to do. What could we be doing individually? So a couple of things that we could be doing right now to help the situation is first of all, we could use less energy. So here's a light bulb. Little things like making sure we turn off lights when we're not in the room. Making sure that we have our central heating turned down to a slightly lower setting so we're using less energy from fossil fuels. And finally, thinking carefully maybe about our transport. Do we always have to drive everywhere? Maybe we could cycle. So thinking carefully about things like driving less. So hopefully now, after watching this video, we understand a little bit more about climate change. Thank you.